Congratulations on choosing one of the most innovative hyperbaric chambers on the market. Now that you've got all the equipment to complete your treatments, it's extremely important to watch this entire video before operating your chamber. Safety is considered a main concern by Summit to See. It is our policy and practice to extensively test all of our chambers, sparing no expense when it comes to safety. Our hyperbaric chambers are class two medical devices requiring a prescription. In this first segment of the hyperbaric training video, we will discuss the innovative features of your chamber. This segment is designed to be an overview, so if you see a chamber that looks different from your own, rest assured we will get into the specifics of your chamber in the next segment. Please note that we are constantly developing new technology to complement our chambers, so there may be a photo or video footage that doesn't quite match your chamber. Follow along in the instructional manual as it will contain the most current updates or call your distributor if you have a question. First, each of Summit to C's hyperbaric chambers feature relief valves that are color-coded to match the gauge. They are generally located on the top of the chamber next to other components. The blue relief valve will automatically start releasing pressure when the chamber is fully pressurized at 1.3 ATA. The yellow safety valve will only open in the event of an overpressure situation. Additionally, throughout the treatment, the blue valve will maintain a constant pressure inside the chamber. Caution. If the relief valve does not open for more than 10 minutes, you should immediately stop treatment and contact your distributor. The relief valves allow for the circulation of fresh air into the chamber and the expulsion of CO2 out of the chamber. Therefore, it is critical the valves are operating properly during a treatment. Additionally, throughout the treatment, these valves will maintain a constant pressure inside the chamber. Inside the chamber, the relief valve looks like this and is located on the ceiling of the chamber. One way to release the pressure from the chamber is by pressing the button in the center of this valve. Additionally, this is the dump valve for deflating the chamber and regulating the flow of air. It is featured on the interior and exterior of the chamber. The innovative design of the pressure dump valve allows you to have complete control of the rate that the pressure is released. Next, this is a fill valve where the compressor hose will be connected. This connection is called quick disconnect. The hose simply snaps into its fitting on the chamber. Please note, it is very important that the compressor remain on for the entire treatment period. This ensures circulation and exchange of air, providing a safe and comfortable treatment. Each chamber has an industry standard gauge that is color-coded for simplified reading. The gauge is located on the exterior of the chamber and the accuracy is plus or minus 5%. Along with our highly translucent material, notice the windows on the chambers. This combination was designed to help provide comfort and convenience during your treatments. The shallow dive has one window. The dive chamber has three windows. The grand dive has four windows. And the grand dive vertical has two. Additionally, there are two zippers that stretch nearly the length of the chamber. These zippers are dual triggered and can be opened and closed from the inside or outside of the chamber. It is very important that both zippers are completely zipped each time the chamber is in use. The belts that surround the chamber are vital to ensuring the chamber's integrity. Each belt fastens with a heavy-duty metal buckle. It is also very important that these belts are used each time you inflate the chamber. There are also a few other components on each chamber. This valve is the auxiliary valve featuring standard medical fittings. Finally, each chamber comes with an ultra-quiet motor with patented sound suppression, permitting a restful and relaxing treatment. These highly compact systems are designed for continuous operation using a medical grade hose. Even with their small and compact profile, the highly efficient design offers generous airflow for a cool and comfortable experience.
Now that you have a better understanding of the chamber and all its features, let's talk about setting up your dive chamber. Please complete the following steps carefully before beginning a treatment. The dive chamber measures approximately 28 inches in diameter and 7 feet in length. The dive features three windows, one on the top and one on each end. There are also three belts that surround the chamber. The two relief valves are located here. The gauge is located next to the dump valve and auxiliary valve on the front exterior of the chamber. When you unpack the chamber, be sure you have the chamber, its frame, two bolsters, the mat, and two compressors with the hoses. First, lay out the chamber. The first step is to attach the bolsters. Place a bolster on each side and find the two external loops attached to the end belts. Slip the deflated bolster into each loop. Be sure the bolsters are placed through the loop of the belt, not the belt that surrounds the chamber. The bolster should look like this. Now fill the bolsters using the compressor hose. Plug in the compressor and find the white adapter included with the DVD. Attach this adapter to the end of the hose as shown here. Simply hold the end of the hose up to the valve on the end of the bolster. Then turn the compressor off by unplugging the cord. It is now time to attach the hose to the chamber. Find the fill valve located on the top part of the chamber. This innovative design features quick connect technology. Simply snap the hose to the valve until you hear a click as shown here. The zipper system is comprised of several components. The first is the inside airtight zipper. This zipper features two silver metal triggers. This trigger, highlighted here, has a black T-shaped pull attached to the outside. This is for operating the chamber from the outside. The other trigger, highlighted here, has a black T-shaped pull attached to the inside for operating the chamber from within. There are two horseshoe shaped docks at each end of the airtight zipper. Next is the structural zipper that features only one trigger with a pull on the outside and a pull on the inside. Next are the handles located on the outside at each end of the zippers. These components will assist when opening the zipper. When you receive the chamber it is configured for outside operation. Open the chamber by this outside T-shaped pull on the airtight zipper. When closing from the outside, notice the inside trigger located on your right is completely closed and secured in the dock. The outside trigger with the handle on the left of this view will be pulled to the left and secured in the same type of dock. Again, please be sure this trigger is secured tightly into the dock. Now close the structural zipper. This is how a properly closed zipper should look. A common consumer mistake is not closing the zipper completely as shown here. An additional mistake is allowing the trigger for the inside zipper to be stuck between the teeth of the zipper as shown here. Be sure to avoid these common mistakes. Now close the outside structural zipper all the way. If the structural zipper is not completely closed, the strength of the zipper is greatly reduced. This will affect the integrity of the chamber. The chamber will now begin to inflate. Caution! It is extremely important that each zipper is secured each time the chamber is used. Make sure the airtight zipper is 100% closed every time the chamber is in use. Also, make sure the structural zipper is secured 100% every time the chamber is in use. We cannot stress the importance of these components enough. Failure to follow these steps may result in damage to the chamber. The dive chamber is fitted with three belts that are fastened with buckles. 
Fasten each of the buckles and check to see that they are secure. Also, make sure the belts are not twisted. Now turn on the compressor by plugging in the motor. Once the chamber begins to reach pressure, you will hear this sound. This is normal. The sounds you are hearing are the relief valves cycling old air out of the chamber while the compressor cycles new air in. This maintains a constant pressure inside the chamber. If you do not hear this sound and the chamber has been running for more than 10 minutes, immediately end the treatment and call the distributor before further use. Do not, under any circumstance, use the chamber if the relief valves are not properly operating. Other ways to be sure the valves are operating properly are, from the outside, to put your hand over the exhaust valve and feel airflow. And from the inside, put your hand over the exhaust valve and feel a slight suction. Remember, if they are operating incorrectly, discontinue use immediately. Now check the gauge. When the chamber is fully pressurized, the gauge should read in the blue zone, which is 4 PSI. If the gauge is reading in the black zone, it is below proper operating pressure. The yellow area is a caution zone, meaning your chamber's pressure is above 1.3 ATA. If it does not seem to be reaching pressure, when the gauge reads zero, first check the zippers to be sure they are closed completely. Next, be sure the dump valve is closed and no air is escaping. If the chamber still does not seem to be reaching full pressure, call your distributor. You have now successfully tested your hyperbaric chamber. Turn off the motor and open the dump valve. When the gauge reads zero, unbuckle the belts, open the structural zipper, and open the airtight zipper. The previous steps were explained for outside operation. To configure the chamber for inside operation, enter the chamber while someone assists you by closing the internal airtight zipper from the outside of the chamber. Then open the zipper from the inside. For those operating the chamber from the inside, first turn the motor on and buckle the belt by your head. Then step into the chamber and fasten the buckles before securing the zippers. Sit upright in the chamber while it's deflated and fasten the remaining buckles. Then close the structural zipper before closing the airtight zipper. Be careful not to miss the structural zipper and take extra care to be sure that both are closed completely. This plays a vital role in retaining the integrity of the chamber. When deflating the chamber, turn the red knob located on the inside of the chamber. The innovative design of the pressure dump valve allows you to have complete control of the rate that the pressure is released. By rotating the dump valve in either direction, air is released from slow to fast. In the first position, the air will be released very slowly and the pressure will stabilize at about 1.5 PSI. This position can also be used when pressurizing the chamber to reduce ear irritation by slowing down the pressurization process. There are multiple indicators to help you determine when the chamber has reached a safe pressure to open the zipper. When the sides of the chamber are softening, the sound of the exhaust valve has lessened, or you no longer feel the pressure in your ears, give the inside airtight zipper a quick tug, opening it approximately three inches. Wait five seconds. Then open the zippers, unbuckle the belts, and climb out. Now place the mat inside the chamber. It is now time to assemble the frame. Notice that this innovative external frame consists of three pieces. The two side pieces, labeled number one and two, are identical and therefore interchangeable. 
The third piece, labeled number three, is the straight rod that will help support the top of the chamber. Also notice that each piece is connected with a string. Snap those together. It is best to build the frame around the inflated chamber. Do not try to build the frame by itself. There are straps attached to the bolster to secure the frame. Take piece number one and thread it through the two strap loops on one side. Then take piece number two and thread it through the two strap loops on the other side. Connect pieces number one and two together after they are secured in the strap loops. Next, place piece number three across the top of the frame. The last step is to secure the bungee cords through the loops and connect them to the frame. As the chamber begins to inflate, you will notice an added pressure in your ear. This is normal. However, it is necessary to relieve the pressure through your ear's eustachian tube. There are several methods for doing this. The first is the Valsalva maneuver. Pinch your nose, close your mouth, and try blowing out your nose. Repeat every time you begin to feel that pressure. Yawning or opening your mouth wide can also help. Lastly, chewing gum may help relieve this pressure. The pressure feeling is similar to that of changing altitude or landing in an airplane. If the pressure is not relieved, temporarily turn off the compressor until you feel relief. Also, opening the dump valve may relieve this pressure. Continue to stop and start the compressor until the chamber reaches full pressure. The compressor should only be off for a brief time, about one minute, as the compressor must remain on in order to maintain quality air inside the chamber. Once the chamber reaches full pressure and the relief valves open, continue to run the compressor to prevent carbon dioxide buildup. For your convenience and comfort, you may take beverages, laptops, phones, DVD players, or any other form of entertainment into your chamber. You may even take a nap while inside the chamber. We do ask you to please refrain from bringing in shoes or sharp objects such as knives or forks. Be sure you are fully familiar with these procedures before taking a treatment. Remember these important steps. Be sure both zippers are completely closed. Each belt must be securely fastened. The motor must remain on during the entire treatment. And the relief valves must be operating properly. Following these steps will ensure a safe and comfortable hyperbaric experience. These instructions will also enhance the life of your chamber, avoiding unnecessary damage or failure. Not following these instructions may result in damage that is not covered by your warranty. We are committed to your satisfaction.